close as you can and then kind of do your fine work when you get in there with the exacto blade but anyway there's one side and uh, here's a little dealy for the roof so go ahead and kind of find your center line there And bam, there you can go do the same thing on the other side. You can go back in and add a pinstripe drawing if you want. Sometimes, sometimes I'll do it without and I'll just get in there and I'll freehand with the blade and do the pinstripe, but most of the time my OCD makes me do this drawing. And it doesn't hurt to have the guideline and a lot of times if you work with like say something like a black paint first and you'll lose a lot of visibility so having your drawn on lines to reference when you go to peel keep those on there definitely it will help you So there's the there's the frontier of the design anyhow. <coughs> That's another thing too is you're gonna be constantly like rotating the body around in your hands whether you're drawing or blading to try to get the right approach angle for whatever you're doing same thing when you're brushing too but yeah a lot of times when you're blading you'll have to turn a line into a multi-part thing and one of the things too people ask me how do I do my drips when I'm cutting them Instead of trying to get a one swoop motion of, say this is your exacto and you want to do your line, a lot of people think you just need to go in there and do the whole motion, but what I'll do is I'll start up here on the top line, do my cut, bring it to the halfway point, and then I'll start in on the other side here, swoop in, and then just make a meet. And as long as your drawings are done with like a super fine sharpie, try to run your blade like through the center of your drawing. It gets kind of easier with time, but like you'll get a feel for it. Anyhow, I need to paint this body for somebody else. So I can't really knock out this design or whatever. I will try to do a video that actually shows maybe a real basic paint job sometime. We'll get some crummy old body and just try to do a couple things. But for the most part, that's my setup. Nothing spectacular, really. These fans with the filters are like major, major deal for indoors. Um... I was using one fan for the longest time and it's just, I noticed how dusty my house was. So I've tried to, I've tripled up now on my fans and my filters. These more open type screens, instead of the like pleated, hello kitty, hi baby. They won't clog up nearly as fast. The pleated ones like to pull themselves into the fan and to make the fan work extra, extra hard. It doesn't keep the flow up. But these type of filters definitely, definitely work. This is from about five weeks on this fan. So it's absolutely doing its job. My dad actually just sent me a whole big box full of these filters so I can keep them nice and fresh. Um, 
when the weather's good, I have a window right here, so I'll take this fan and let it pull my fumes out. But most of the time here in Oregon, it's either too cold or too dang hot. So I rock this setup. This is my little photo booth. These are foam boards. You guessed it, Dollar Tree. And um, I just constructed the little box. I seen somebody else had done it online, so I just borrowed the idea. Um, this one's Keone Pang. It's going to Chico. He's just getting in to Nitro again after six years off, probably, at least. And uh, these are for Mr. Goodman. Those are going up to Washington. And they look pretty badass. I'm pretty stoked on how those came out. Uh, yeah, so this is this is my whole hobby room. Keep my trash can here. You'd be surprised how fast that puppy fills up. And there's no use in using a bag because your sharp cuttings from the Lexan will just rip right through it. So just raw dog it and then take it out to the can when you need. What do I use to back my paint work with? Um, almost exclusively to me a PS12 silver rattle can. If you have like a really big body and you want just loads of area coverage, this is like the old standard, the gloss protective enamel from Rust-Oleum. But I've noticed the tips clog like super duper easy. You don't normally get to use more than about a third of a can. So I really only use it when I break out like a large scale body. This stuff I use because it's just, it's super easy. It's very, very um, nitro resistant. That's how I ended up finding how to use this, as a lot of guys back in the day were asking me to make stuff as nitro-proof as I could. I painted one for myself, backed it with this, and I hosed it with my fuel, and it held up to it. Um, a lot of people report to me that their nitro cars are getting pretty good life, so... This also, because it's so thin, makes it easy to peel up your window borders here. When you use the gloss protective enamel, it's kind of thick, so when you go to peel your window here, it doesn't like to do so very cleanly all the time. This stuff, super duper easy. I've heard other people use white. I haven't. I just got in the habit of always doing silver because it's neutral. You can use it on dark, you can use it on light. Black, I used one time for backing shells, and it crinkled my paint. I don't know why. I think it must have more chemicals in it, so I don't recommend it. I use this just to paint my wings. Um, Biddy Design Caravaggio Airbrush. I bought this guy very recently and I haven't broken it out yet. I, um, I've just been so in the habit of using my Iwatas and I got a little bit of the autism so it's hard to change stuff up. But I want to transfer into this. Super duper nice. It's construction is just top notch. I mean, Biddy designed the Mr. Rabidi's like probably the best painter on the planet. So he, you know he put his work into this thing. It's really, really pretty. Super nice. Heavy, good quality. One of the things I was initially scared at that made me not really want to use it is this bowl taper seems tighter than what I'm used to on the Awadas. And what I'll do a lot of times between colors is I will wipe it out with my ultra fiber cloth and 